Okay, so just a quick video on um, a question that I've seen being asked on a lot of comment sections uh, on YouTube and so on. I've seen it being asked around. Um, it's about the overheating issue in older graphics cards, older or aging graphics cards. Um, and this fix is for people who aren't really tech savvy, who don't know how to undervolt their cards or underclock their cards in general. Any, any software technical stuff, if you don't know that stuff, this fixes for you. So let's assume that you've already tried the most common two methods, that is replacing the thermal paste on your card and cleaning out the fan and heat sink for its dust. You probably did it yourself or you gave it to a shop to do it and your results, your results based on after doing that is not a big, it's not, not a big difference, like maybe just two or three degrees re less. Uh, it's not something substantial and your graphics card is still overheating. So in this video, I'll show you a very easy non-technical method on how to limit the temperature of your graphics card. But as a disclaimer, this is at the expense of your performance. Your performance will reduce somewhat slightly due to this, um, this so solution. So what I have here is my GTX 770. It's a card that was released in 2013. This is the Founders Edition 2GB version um, paired with my Core i7 4670, uh, 4770 uh, computer with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, this graphics card, I bought it used and it, it was in good condition. I got it for $60. And I tried the initial thermal paste and um, cleaning out the heatsink method. And it didn't really fix it because this card used to reach 80 degrees on most modern games like Call of Duty, World War II, Subnautica, and so on, uh, Destiny 2. That, uh, but especially Subnautica, it used to increase the temperature to like 81, 82 degrees. It, it's just insane. So I thought that's not that's not healthy. The the card's not going to last very long. So what I thought I'll do is just do this method and limit it to what I thought was a good temperature that is 70 degrees for an older card but if you feel like uh, you want to go lower you could but again as a disclaimer this is at the expense of your performance so I'll show you now how you're gonna do this first you're gonna you want to download MSI Afterburner you probably already know what that um, software is but if you don't know just go ahead and download it MSI Afterburner is an overclocking tool uh, it's probably the best overclocking tool on the market. I mean, you get EVGA's overclocking software, but this is what everyone uses. Um, it's a really good overclocking software. It's very simple to use, and it could be used for monitoring your performance as well. It has a built-in monitor, a uh, performance monitor in frames per second, and so on. So you want to go to Downloads over here and click Download MSI Afterburner. I've already downloaded it, so I'll switch over to my other screen over here. And this is what it looks like. Man, if you ha already have it, make sure to download the latest version. And your information will appear here. GeForce GTX 770. Uh, that's the driver version. And you get a couple of sliders, as you can see. Core voltage, power limit, temperature limit, core clock, memory clock, and fan speed. And you got your clock speeds over here. Memory clock and core clock. Uh, yeah, No, this is the boost and this is the base clock. Um, this appears as zero for some reason, millivoltage, uh, millivolts, but I'm not really sure why, but this is the actual temperature of the, the die on your graphics card, the 770 die in my case, um, the small chip. So what do you want to do now to limit your temperature? First, you want to go, I'll just go in close and you'll see power limit and temperature limit. Now that I've said this priority thing to down facing downwards at temperature limit but you when you get your when, when you download it for the first time this will be facing up like that it'll be facing at power limit what you want to do is now you got to take the temperature limit slider and just move it around to wherever you think is a good temperature so i i usually go with 70 70 degrees so i'll keep it at 70. then what you want to do is look at this priority arrow thing you click it till the arrow faces down now you've given priority to temperature instead of power. But, and notice while you do this, power also changes. So it's limiting the amount of power that's been sent to your card. So you, you change it to whatever you want and you click priority so that arrow faces down. Then you wanna click the check mark so that it's selected. 
and you could also save it to one of the profiles but that's a different uh, video you, you could go check that out on youtube how to use profile and how to use the rest of msi afterburn in general but you got to keep this running in the background as well you got to keep msi after burning after afterburner running in the background or this is not going to work properly it may work for some it may work for for, may not work for some but it doesn't work for me that way I have to keep it running in the background so when you go to st play your game when you let's say you open up Call of Duty World War 2 it's gonna limit the temperature to 70 degrees at the expense of some performance not a lot of performance but some performance. maybe you'll reduce you you lose a maybe like a frame or two but it's still better than having a burnt out graphics card so that's how you do it you Choose your temperature, select priority, click the check mark. Keep it running in the background and you'll be fine. So it does probably go maybe over 71 maximum, like as I've said, but it'll always try to put it down to 70. So, and if you have a very older card, I'd recommend 65. So, but th that that's up to you. That's up to you. So yeah, that's how you do this. Um, and I hope your graphics card will stay cool and you can game in peace instead of feeling that it's gonna catch fire. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content from me. I do many other videos like this, tutorials, unboxings and all tech related stuff, mainly basic like um, budget tech related stuff. So if you're in a budget technology and if you're a person who's always on a budget, just please check out my channel. I've got a lot of videos and stuff on budget tech and so on. All right, so that's it for this video. Thumbs up.